Hello, dear friends, uh, as you know, I have made a, a large long uh, break in recording those videos. Uh, many of you emailed me in the meantime, unfortunately, because of different obligations and circumstances, I could not do these videos regularly during the summer. But now as we are back to the academic year here in Ukraine, um, kind of back to normal, whatever it means in our circumstances, I will try to record the videos more regularly, uh, especially if something important happens. Mm, because during the summer we had uh, this continuing stalemate situation in the front lines that started slowly uh, change in the end of August. Uh, and then, uh, as you all know, we had this uh, outbreak of activity in the front lines in the last uh, week or so, which I'm going to cover in this uh, short video today, just to attract your attention to some aspects of uh, what's going on that were not so uh, much covered in the mainstream media. I, I know that uh, all the leading TV stations and newspapers follow, uh, still follow the war in Ukraine quite closely, especially with this revivification of uh, the front uh, with um, uh, activization of fighting in uh, the eastern Ukraine and with the advancement of Ukrainian troops. Uh, there was a lot of attention in the media, but as usually they cover, uh, I would say, more events than undercurrents than tendencies uh, and I will try to pay as much attention as I'm able to those little grassroots um, events or uh, aspects of the situation as it unfolds now in, in Ukraine. Uh, in the last week we have crossed the threshold of 200 days of this war and it's clear that uh, the war will still continue at least till the end of the year and maybe much longer we don't know that but what happened uh, these days is what we call ukrainian reconquista uh, the uh, taking over retaking over of the territories that have been lost in the east of ukraine and that happened extremely quickly uh, our troops were using um, throughout this process of Reconquista, this sign of the cross, a white cross that they mark their vehicles uh, with, and it became kind of symbol for this movement. And uh, it's already reflected in many images and many pictures from the front lines, but also in some artworks I'm going to show you later on in this video. Um, so if we look at, uh, at uh, what happened in the front lines, there was this very swift uh, jump like advancement of Ukrainian troops over three days uh, that uh, recaptured a very large territory in the Kharkiv region in the south, in the northeast of Ukraine, especially around the city of Izum. And the city of Izum has been a hub, kind of transportational hub, very important for uh, this war. And uh, there were very heavy fighting uh, battles going on over the city in the first month of the war uh, and then the city was captured by Russians and held uh, in their hands till uh, the last week. Now it's uh, reclaimed by Ukrainian troops and as you might have heard uh, President of Ukraine has visited this uh, newly liberated uh, city recently which was like another slap in the face of Russian propaganda that he was not afraid to travel there. Uh, that means the situation is quite under the control of the Ukrainian side. Uh, if we look at the map, uh, there is this region here in the upper corner. Those uh, red areas are the areas that were captured by the Russians in the, in the first days, in the first weeks of the war. And now like about a half of this has been reclaimed or more than half has been reclaimed by uh, the Ukrainian government, uh, which is the large, the second largest loss of the occupied territories by the Russians after their 
fleeing from Kyiv and Chernihiv in the north of Ukraine. But the difference is that in that case, it was the beginning of the war and they never really occupied those territories. They rather uh, went through them with their tanks and then had to withdraw back. In the case of uh, uh, Kharkiv region, it was firmly occupied and the Russian troops were firmly established there, but um, uh, what Ukrainian generals did with the help of uh, NATO and US uh, military commanders, they planned, uh, I think, a very wise uh, campaign. They have overstretched the forces of Russian army uh, on uh, here on the south in the Kherson region. They launched a seemingly major offensive on Kherson here. So the Russians had to regroup their troops from, from the east, from all over here to this little spot here where the main fighting was going on. And once they regrouped all the troops there, our, uh, our military destroyed uh, the bridges and they were trapped in a small area. They cannot cross the Dnipro River and are locked there. And in the meantime, uh, this part of the front has been stripped from the presence, heavy presence of Russian military and our troops could advance uh, rapidly. Uh, Russians uh, claim that this is not a major military defeat. This is simply a planned regrouping of their troops. Uh, so they leave the Kharkiv region in order to uh, establish more powerful presence elsewhere. And uh, in the Ukrainian social media, this uh, provoked a whole wave of humor and laughter. And someone came up with this quote from War and Peace by Lev Tolstoy from the 19th century. And it seems the tactics of Russian army and Russian propaganda did not change uh, over time. So the quote goes, the gazettes stated as usually briefly and vaguely that after brilliant engagements, the Russians had to retreat from Austerlitz and had made their withdrawal in perfect order. The old prince understood from this official report that our army had been defeated. Uh, so there is this kind of pun in the text, uh, irony. And uh, what we are seeing, contrary to Russian propaganda, that uh, while defeating uh, Russian troops were actually uh, while defeated or retreating, their troops were uh, really uh, fleeing in panic and they have abandoned uh, terrible mass, terrible destructions, but also a lot of uh, vehicles and weaponry. Um, and again, there is a kind of half joke that Russia has become a second largest supplier of weapons to Ukraine now, second only to the United States. And uh, people call it jokingly uh, Russian land lease because the number of uh, tanks, uh, armored vehicles and, and so on is uh, unprecedented uh, and they are all in the working condition. So they didn't even care to destroy them or to, to break the engines or anything. They just abandoned um, so many vehicles and, and tanks and, and artillery systems and very sophisticated modern systems that uh, it supersedes by far what, for example, Germany has given us during this war to help Ukraine. So um, fortunately, these vehicles can be still used by the Ukrainian uh, side to fight now uh, against their former owners. But um, on a much less optimistic note, the destructions are terrible. Uh, the region is uh, literally lies in ruins. Uh, we have seen so many heartbreaking images of uh, destroyed uh, buildings, destroyed towns, destroyed churches, burned down villages. Uh, it's the beginning of the school year, but many Ukrainian children cannot go to school because their their schools, their classes look like what you see in the picture. And um, it's unbelievable, but more than 10 million of Ukrainian population from that area has relocated internally in Ukraine or even abroad. Uh, this super heavy fighting um, 
that was going on for months there uh, has left uh, extreme, extremely high number of bodies of civilians. Uh, there are reports from various uh, towns that in the collapse of one building that was hit by a bomb or a rocket, um, like 60 people died at once. And now as Ukrainian authorities return back to their to that uh, part of the world, uh, to that part of the country, uh, they rediscover uh, mass graves uh, with bodies, unidentified bodies of civilians who have been killed uh, in, like, who became uh, victims of the shellings, and then also many civilians who have become victims of uh, kind of ethnic cleansings and uh, extrajudicial killings by the Russian side who kind of investigated who has sympathies for the Ukrainian army or who ca whose relatives can be serving in Ukrainian army, army and they were often torturing and killing these people uh, so that nowadays uh, we are returning to, to a situation of Bucha um, in the in the days of uh, March and April, when uh, so many civilians were killed around Kyiv, and uh, in Izum and in other places in Kharkiv region, uh, our troops discover many uh, kind of improvised cemeteries like this, uh, burials of people in the forests, in on the fields, torture chambers. Uh, there are many pictures of, of little basements that were established as uh, detention facilities for people and uh, the count of people, uh, dead people, missing people goes in literally in thousands and uh, we are still to discover what happened there exactly and how many people have been killed but it's already officially stated by the ukrainian government by the president that the number of casualties will be far more than it was in bucha and around kiev uh, the exhumation procedures have started in many places and they are uh, undigging the bodies to bury them with dignity and to notify their relatives about people who uh, were reported missing and whose bodies are found and identified now. After this major um, military defeat, Putin has turned to his usual terrorist practice of shelling uh, Ukrainian cities uh, residential quarters, uh, important infrastructure objects with their missiles from the territory of Russian Federation or from the airspace, uh, from their military jets. And we had a number of uh, severe blackouts in the country, especially in the east, and floods because um, some uh, uh, electricity producing stations uh, on the rivers were hit and uh, there was flood of, of towns and villages around those areas. So this the situation, the humanitarian situation is really deteriorating because with the winter, severe Ukrainian winter coming and uh, this uh, terror against uh, civilian and infrastructure, which is officially announced by the Ukraine, by the Russian authorities, uh, we are facing an, a humanitarian catastrophe in the in the following month, um, unless there there will be some unrest in Russia or there will be enormously. Uh, more effective pressure from the international community. Uh, this 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 undermining of Ukrainian infrastructure will go on, and it will probably be a very very difficult winter for all of us. Uh, this is just a picture I found on Facebook that particularly impressed me. Uh, it's a piece of Russian rocket stuffed with these little darts that, while exploding, kill many people around. Uh, as I said in the beginning, there is uh, a reflection of this uh, 
fighting and this Ukrainian counter offensive in art. Uh, and I have a number of friends who are iconographers iconographers, artists, and uh, I decided to run a small auction of artworks um, for the viewers of this channel, for people who supported us for a month um, in our fight, who sent uh, monetary donations to us to buy various medical or military equipment. Uh, I will try to engage more of your help with the with the help of art so we are going to set up an online auction to sell some artworks and here are just two examples of the artwork uh, inspired by the recent events uh, and an icon of an angel um, on against the background of the cross which is which has become the symbol of this uh, counteroffensive and uh, another uh, drawing by a friend of mine, Uliana Krehovets, whose works you have already seen before. I think I have shown them in the previous uh, presentations. Again, like Ukrainian military men and women uh, stretching out the flag with the white cross. I will be announcing this uh, silent internet auction with um, a number of icons and paintings and drawings in my uh, next videos. Please stay tuned and if you can help us uh, further please do so. I understand that the interest for, for the war in Ukraine sometimes is declining and people are tired and so on but uh, as you can see uh, it's far from over. We are waiting for our troops to advance more. We are waiting for the situation in Russia to unravel uh, and um, maybe these two factors, military pressure and internal unrest in Russia, internal protests of the Russian people, if they are able for those protests, will change the situation together with international pressure. Thank you very much for watching. Please share those videos. I need to regain my audience after this summer pause. So if you have a mailing list or you can share on the social media uh, so that more people see this video, I will be immensely grateful to you. Thank you for watching.